think we're on if now. If you're watching, you're really bored. Yeah, we're live, man. We're live. All right, good. This, well, here we go. We just turn it on and we go. Hey, when I started this shit, there was a couple of guys that I had to have on here. I wanted on here. Finally got one. Finally, yeah. Well, no, I'm serious. Took a while. I'm serious. There's there a couple of guys when I, when I started writing this thing down years ago that who I wanted, who I thought would be interesting, um, had a lot of knowledge. We've got a list. We're just like scared to ask. Pers personable. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you can always ask anybody. All they can do is say no, yeah, right? Exactly. You know, we got clout now. We're, we're, we're growing. Yeah, yeah, well, now you got an audience. Yeah. We're, people are looking at people it. People want to be on here. Yeah, when you get the frenzy on here, that's kind of next level shit. We'll see what we can do. All right. Today's guest. Um, Captain Greg Merritt, Fish and Frenzy. What episode is this? Um, it's 2.16, 16th episode. 2.16? Yeah, that's season two. It's code. Yeah. Is this my 16th episode? No, I think it's like your 13th or 12th. Okay. This No, 14th or 15th. I was just, just adding them up last night. Don't do that. I'm sorry. Don't make noise. I'm just nervous. Because you were side, I'm sure you are. Side <laughs> Frenzy. All right, I know a lot of Greg's backstory. Um, but not, I guess, not a lot of people did. Did you ever talk about that on the, on the? We TV? always, we always talked about it on the show. Did they know where you went to the college? Back show, uh, not necessarily. I know where you went probably. to college. Um, actually, I've got a lot of pressure from everybody I went to college with right now because it's our thirty fifth reunion. You and I'm you're like, famous. I got to take three days off in June. It's to a go gym. to Bates College up in Lewiston, Maine for thirty five year reunion. I guess I gotta do it. You just said that now you're now the alumni people are gonna be <laughs> now I yeah. Well we gotta bring everyone in that we can, you know, whatever it takes. Um biology degree? I am as a bio degree. I took all the marine bio courses I can take. Yeah. Um, which wasn't many. But um planning on actually going to med school. And it didn't work out. I kept fishing and the guys I fished with own you know the guys that own boats were doctors and attorneys and i looked at it i said by the time i go to med school and make enough money to be able to do this for fun i'm not going to want to do it anymore i hear you but so i just kept fishing here i am now i am oregon inlet just have fishing. you learned more from college marine biology or from fishing marine biology different <laughs> right i learned different um i mean we're essentially biologists think about it I, I, we're trying to track fish down um, we do figure out where they go how they're going to bite when they're going to bite yep. you know and some of the best some of the best marine biologists from a fishery standpoint are probably some of the least educated yeah oh. yeah they don't don't have as much understanding as the ocean as i would say we do no or lack of i would say lack of understanding yeah well i mean you know there's a lot of people who go to school and they're like i got a degree in this and i know this and i know that you can't beat experience on the water yeah i mean look at the guys we fish around here they've been doing it all their lives it's all they've ever done some of them have never gone anywhere else other than right here and they've got a better handle of of what's going on in the ocean and people with degrees over and over and over again which a lot of it is, and a lot of it surprises us every day and it's always every, yeah. the more we do it the less we know almost as what donnie and i always say there's you no know, doubt you know <laughs> right when you think you got to figure it out you're wrong yep yep exactly um it's an interesting topic probably boring most people that are watching but um <laughs> this is that's what when i left you and went back to college in grad school that's what that was my um phd work was looking at what was called you know anecdotal evidence and trying to tie it into what was out there in the scientific literature and trying to correlate it way beyond me i was i, was, I wasn't smart enough yeah. to do it but still it was what we we're talking about because the guys like you that have been doing it a long time have been successful and do you keep notes i do but they're minimal I still keep notes. I still, and that way I can at least reference. Yeah. I've seen this condition before. I've seen these situations before. Maybe I could try this again. And it's part of the scientific method. I mean, that's what it, it is. Guys use it a lot of times that don't have formal education. They use it without realizing they're using it. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And, that's, and I look at it with what Jack and I are doing offshore. Our conditions change, but it's really a... a it's a little tighter skill set than what you have because you're fishing inshore and it's it's always changing and a little bit of temperature a little bit of water clarity a little bit of um tide tide data really influences the, where the fish move more so than what we have 
And I think that what you guys have to do as far as inshore, being that you're doing so many different fisheries and there's a lot of conditions to change, it takes a lot more than what we do. That being said, I find what you guys are doing a lot more challenging because, yes, conditions change regularly in my, my fishery, but I'm, I'm on a, a meso or a micro scale where you guys, oh, are, you guys are on a macro scale. If I, if I go to one spot and it's not working, I'm going to hopscotch a mile, two miles down the road and try again on another flat or something. You guys sometimes... You're 40 miles out of the game. You're out of the game that day. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, we fish. Sometimes we are, too. <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah, because yeah. you're, sometimes it gets the distance between bites get y'all. And once you're there, you're committed. Yeah, you whereas know, me, you, I'm not committed. Unless you know, you're me. Unless you're you or someone else has got a sponsor paying for fuel. <laughs> um, we're trying to make a living. So you got, I mean, it factors in it. It's hard, it's hard to say it, but there's days when I'm out of position. And my charter is going to sacrifice because we can't run 40 miles yeah. to get in position. And a lot of that is, I mean, it's my personal choice. You know, today I look at it, I see the fleet going over there. I said, screw it. I'm going over there. And it works a lot of times. Sometimes it doesn't. But Well, I mean, one day last year, the ga when the gaffer, the day the gaffer showed up, I was 38 miles from you. And oh, we yeah. went chasing tunas and the tunas weren't there. And Greg went saw the shot, and he went down there, and he texted me like, "Oh my God, God the gaffers!" <laughs> and uh, and I hollered down at my party. I said, "Look, fuel's expensive. I think I said it's. I think I said if you want to give me four hundred dollars, we'll go." And they they did. Yeah. They gave me the money, and we we took off and went down That's there. So hard to do. I have I. You have it such is. a hard time just looking down after somebody's already. I've already set the price. Well, this was and a, then going, hey. Pony up a little more. We'll, we'll Fort, roll the dice again. Fort, this was one of those corporate groups. So they're, oh, yeah, they didn't, they're, yeah, they had they, no problem with it. These guys didn't have any skin in the game. So they were like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew it was this type of group and they would yeah. probably spring for it. You know what I mean? You know, rather than being mad at me for, you know, going the wrong way, they were like, yeah, let's go get them. Oh. Oh, there you go. Anyway. All right. Well, I, want what's going hear, on. I want to hear about Donnie as an offshore mate. <laughs> I've heard. Uh, no, no, but, I heard yeah, no. First, we have to pose the question to Gregory. Gregory, who's the worst mate you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. The worst mate I've ever had. <laughs> Donnie thinks it's him. You mean a, like a full time mate? Well, I worked with you all summer. Don yeah, Donnie <laughs> worked with me for a summer. Uh, we were, I was running the Dream Girl. And here's, the, here's one of the best things. It's about a great. Donnie. This is. So, Donnie. Donnie gets on there with me, um, just kind of trying to figure it out. I think at the time you had fished with Clarky a little bit. Yeah. And I, rode out with a handful of people. And I'd worked one year before with Bob over at Pirates Cove on my That's right, yeah. four plane. And then I went and ran the boat in Guatemala and burned it down. Yeah. And came back here and you came by and said, Hey, I know you're. I needed a mate. I had, oh, so. no, no, because then I'd gone in the boat yard with okay. Omi and, and Jackass. Fit flying fisherman job came up and Ernie said, Ernie said, go ahead and take this. Keith is coming back to work for me in like June. Go ahead yeah. and take that. Keith Biggs? Yeah. Biggs, yeah. Cool. And he said, go ahead and take this full-time job with Glenn. And that's when I ended up putting Glenn on his back in the cockpit. And oh, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, I'd see, I was running, um, at that point, I was still freelancing and Paul Spencer was building the first Spencer, um, which is now the biopsy. So while he was building that boat, he had sold the Sizzler to um, Jeff Ross, which is now the Obsession. So Paul was building his boat. Um, it wasn't going to be ready for the season. So we had the Playmate, Billy Bomb's old boat, which is a Merritt, <laughs> Billy Bomb combination <laughs> hull. Um, that um, it was a good charter boat. It got us. It got us there and back. Sometimes. A lot of days. So, uh, so we started running. Uh, actually. Duke Spencer was running Paul's trips on that, the offshore trips. He didn't really want to run the offshore trips, so he asked me if I'd run it. I said, sure, no problem. So I started running the boat. Um, and I don't remember who we had for a mate at the time, but Duke didn't want to go offshore. So I ended up finding Donnie for a mate. And it's funny because, you know, normally the captain – runs the boat all the way out and on the way home the mate cleans up and the captain takes a nap um donnie it was he he wanted to drive the boat so much that <laughs> <laughs> every day when we pick up lines to go home he just cranked the stuff up 
take the baits off, put the rods on the rod holder, climb up on the bridge. He goes, I got her right here. So he had a lot of experience running the boat in and out and I got some good naps. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing to do. I love running. I, oh, still, yeah. I still love running the boat, yeah. man. See, I do too. I never sleep. I never sleep on the way on the way home. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. if I'm tired, I do. But so, my mate usually gets everything cleaned up. So by the time he's done, we got, you know, never my fifteen that. miles. Never to go, and That's not enough time for a nap. You yeah. know what I mean? All right, that's our program. Our pro our program is when you crank everything up, you do everything you can yeah. before you get back to the dock. And if you choose not to, then come up and run the boat and. I'll yeah. lay down. Yeah, but I, but I mean, I'm I'm happy for him to prep his baits and and wash his rods off and change his lead. I mean, if he wants to do all that. I mean, I used to do it because it was nice in the morning. Then I got a nap in the morning going out. There's you know? there's too much work, um, and you look at some of the guys at the fishing center that, no matter how long they've been doing it, they still. It seems like every day is just a, a mess. Um, you look at the good mates and. Just like you say, on the way home, you prep everything. Everything's ready for tomorrow. You know, when you step on the boat, you put your ice on the boat, you go fishing. Everything's ready to go. Dickie and that makes, to, and that's what makes a good team. That's why people catch fish. Dickie used to pass me every morning going to the fishing center. Like he would beat me. He can't get there quick enough. Because <laughs> he would beat me to the boat. And like, but I mean, because I would do everything in the afternoon, all I had to do was pull the rods out. You yeah. know, like I pull the rods out and we're, and we're, we're off to the races, you know, because I get ice, pull the rods out and we're ready to go. You know I mean? God, I don't, I mean, I used to, these guys used, some of these guys used to redo their leaders on the way out. And I mean, you know, you think about the rough days we fish and when you've got to do all that crap on the way it's, out, when it's rough and you're getting spray and it's a really, seasick. really simple concept. You do everything at the dock that you cannot do in the ocean. Yeah. You can't park your truck in the ocean. You can't get your ice in the ocean. Yep. And you can't untie the boat in the ocean. So you do all that before you do anything else. Because everything else you can do on the boat. Yeah. And yeah. like our rods, you know, there's an unwritten law on my boat. Don't put anything back in the rack it's not that you can't fish. grab it and go fishing with tomorrow. Yep. Same. Here. You know, trying to redo everything in the morning or on the way out. It's just, it yep. doesn't make well, sense. And, and you got to be ready. Some days it's rough. Yeah, some, some days, days you have to do it. You know, some days, it, you know, and I mean, I used to, you know, if it was rough, I'd get there a little bit early and do it in the morning because the last thing I wanted to do after a rough day was rig up when we pulled back yeah. into the dock. I wanted to get the hell off there and go home, you know, but um, anyway, so so Donnie as a mate, <laughs> let's get back to that. It's, it, Did y'all catch had, anything? He, that was, he's that had was, better mates. <laughs> that was in 98, 96, 96, no, that's right. That was before I got on the Glory Lee and went north. But when no, you, that's that was when, after that. That was when I'm we took to no. Think. That's when I got we you did went north. We right? fished the playmate, and then in and all, then we got of, up there. And went. Then at the beginning of August, you said we're going blue finning. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I said, "What do you mean?" You go, "We're taking the Gloria Lee to Boston, and then we're going from there to Gloucester to Kenny Bunkport." Yeah, and we end up in Kenny Bunkport. We're in Kenny Bunkport for a while. Yeah, and that was fun. I was at. Yeah, I'm going back to school. And he goes, come on, go fishing. Then you can go back to school um, when we're done up there. And I flew out of, flew out of Boston. You drove me to Boston. After, yeah. And I went to grad school the next day. Catching blue fence? We did. We caught a couple, yeah. We did. We caught some. We had, I remember the one that, um. this is where I told you, this is where Greg came down and, why are you sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> we're, so we're anchored up on the tip of Jeffrey's. And it's the middle of the night. And at that point, we really didn't catch many fish at night. You catch some at night, but we generally wouldn't fish at night. Just spend the night and wait for the morning. And everybody's sleeping. And who else was on there with us? Nobody. Just, just me you, and you? Just you and I, yeah. That's right, because um, the owner of the boat, Rick, was coming out the next day. Somebody was dropping him off on an outboard to go fishing with us. And... Uh, <laughs> So I'm sitting, I'm, I'm awake, you know, I'm normally rankered up. I'll, I'll sleep a little bit, but I'm up all night, you know, back yeah, and forth, looking at the machine, watching. watching everything. And I look at the bottom machine, and it's loaded top to bottom with herring. I mean, just loaded all the way across the screen. Big, giant, red cloud of bait. And I'm watching this. I'm like, okay, let me catch some bait. So I go down, jig a couple baits, put them in the well. And then I look at the machine. I can see it from the cockpit. And all of a sudden, the the ball of bait got like a hole in the middle of it, right through the middle of it. It was like a line. <laughs> and I watched it again, and um, I said, there's got to be a fish there. I didn't wake Donnie up. I just put one herring on, sent it down, and we were on. <laughs> started, we, got the, we got the bite. I started the engines. And Donnie, like, stumbles out of the cabin. What are we doing? I said, well, we got one on here. We're good. <laughs> so we catch that fish. 
I don't remember. It was like a 500 pounder. I think it dressed for something. Um, and I said, the owner was coming out the next day. Next day was absolutely slick. Calm comes out with a buddy of mine on his outboard, pulls up to the boat. And it's at that point, I think it was one a day. So we've already got the fish in the cockpit, dressed, ready to go, waiting for him to show up so we could bring him home. Like, <laughs> there you go, Rick. There's your tuna. We're going home. <laughs> it was cool. We were, I, I enjoyed the fishing. Oh, yeah. I mean, because it was live bait fishing, fishing at different depths with live bait. Really cool. Really too, a lot more fun than trolling. It was, it was simple. It's funny because if you look at it from the outside looking in, it's pretty simple. You put a bait down and you wait for the fish to swim by. There's a reason that there's people that are better at it year in and year out. And it's because there's more to it than that. You're thinking in three dimensions. You know, the fish, you see where the fish are coming through. And a lot of times they get patterned. And you don't know where they're going to be. But if you're watching your machine, you're watching the bait. If you're chumming, you know, you kind of know where the fish are moving to. And um, it's it's a little more to it than, than what people think. I mean, a lot of fish is like that. Think about it. Yeah. You know, it's really simple. Yeah, you go out there and get a live shrimp and you throw it out there and catch a trout. No. Sometimes it's that easy, but most of the time it's not. Yeah. Same thing up there. Same thing out here, you know? Oh, yeah. I it's mean, cool. I mean, we, I, it's where I got introduced to you, block and tackle. I'd never used one of those. Yeah. You, have, you guys use those still to get them on the boat? I still have it, but I use a trailer winch now. Okay. Yeah. I actually loaned mine to Donnie White the other day. Does he still have it? <laughs> No. Because I know he had to have something to pull that fish in the other night. He had a... Oh, didn't he rig up a trailer winch too? So, yeah, he had, he had a trailer winch rigged up on the tower leg because um, there's no door on that boat. So, we catch this fish the other day. It's, it ended up dressing 711 pounds. Yeah, big one. And he's asking around to, for block and tackle. I've got one. It's the same one we had back then. I mean, the same, same exact yeah. block and tackle. I had it forever. Um... And I give it to him. He gets a fish in the boat. Um, but we were using that. Even with the door, it makes it a little bit easier getting fish in the boat. We've had, you know, we've caught big fish addressed that were over 800 um, and got them in without it. Right. But I like working smarter, not harder. Yeah. And the block and tackle is so much easier. I don't, I never need the block and tackle. I don't catch big ones. <laughs> not yet. You, you managed to lose them too. <laughs> yeah, I can lose them, but I can't catch them. You always right. lose the big ones. Hey, we got to do this because it's the way this works. We have to go to a, we have a sponsor. You okay. Know, you know we have a sponsor? Yeah, yeah. Who's our sponsor? TW's Bait and Tackle. TW's Bait and Tackle. It's a good sponsor to have. Yeah, Nags Head location. They've been good to us. They've been really good to us. We're going to have a giveaway today. We have a giveaway. He has a question, but we're going to get back. We're going to talk about this guy was on a small show. Okay. A TV show. Yeah. We're going to talk seasons. a little bit about that. All right. Be right back. You're Donnie D from DOA and Misguided Fishing. Check it out. TW's got everything you need to catch all the fishes. The rods, the reels, string, baits from all the guys that make that stuff. Shimano, Daiwa, Penn, St. Croix, Yoziria, Meat Hawk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You want to look fly when you're doing all that catching? They got you covered with gear from Salty Crew, Pelagic, Extra Tough, and more. You got questions? Ask away. TW is staffed by people who fish every chance they get. They got their finger on the pulse of Outer Banks fishing. I haven't even scratched the surface of this place. If It's like a toy store for grown-ups. So check out TW's Bait and Tackle in Nags said the Outer Banks' largest tackle shop. Mile post 10. And now, back to misguided fishing. Good job. Do you edit this out? Sometimes I edit okay. some out. Sometimes I don't edit. Depends. Yeah, the casual, you know, us. You know, yeah, you know, just kind of being, we all screw being, up. Just I mean, being just, us. Oh, we screw up. We could, yeah. If we, depending on how bad the screw up is, if the screw up is such that like that wasn't on, which is or this wasn't on, then I have to. We have to redo the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I've, Donnie, I've, I've, had, I've had screw ups like on international TV. <laughs> Sometimes it's not really good, but it happens. People say. <laughs> um, I did a. Have you seen the video yet for the? Um, Outer Banks Tourism Board? Uh-uh. No. Yeah. Um, they did a, they Tourism Board sponsored a video, had a company come down. It was, tw- it was a 25-person crew. And then I was in it, and Quentin and Stefan were in it. But 25 freaking people. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... We, we did, um, we did a, a promo for Wicked Tuna the first year. And, you know, our normal... Our normal production is you've got one producer on the boat. He's your cameraman. Mm -hmm. um, And then we're all wired for mics. So there's one guy on the boat all the time. And then 
that's on each boat. Then there's a main producer and there's a couple sound guys and a few equipment guys, but there's really 20 people or so, 25 people. Um, and we produce a TV show like that. So we did the, we did the promo, which is basically a commercial. And it was like a set of a Hollywood movie. I mean, they had food trailers, they had yeah. caterers, there was 30 people there, cameras in every That's, place. That was look. the same, same, same deal here. And yeah. that was for a 30 second promotion. One guy, one guy, all he did the whole day was sit in a chair Yeah, <laughs> up on the beach. That was his job. I don't know what he did, but it's all union. I guess so. It, can we talk about how the show started, how you got involved? I, are you allowed yes, to do that? Yeah, yeah. As seen on Wicked Tuna. Yes. <laughs> so now that's, I was afraid to ever ask you while that show was still going on. And I didn't know if there were yeah, stipulations, I mean, yeah. if they were if they wanted a piece of the pie, if they wanted to go in my pocket or something like that. They might have. They might have to pay me. <laughs> How much are we getting paid for this, by the way? Oh, you're, don't worry. You're going to make out. All right. You're going to make out good. A lot of trips. A lot of trips. <laughs> a lot of trips. Way. Um, no, so, so um, when Wicked Tuna started, it would have been... I think they're filming, I think season 12 is airing. Um, and that would be this little promo for Wicked Tuna. I'm not on the show anymore, but Wicked Tuna, February 26th, I believe, at 9 o'clock on Nat Geo is the new episode for the show up north. Um, they started, um, I think this is their 12th season. Because if we were filming this year, it would have been our 10th. Um, so anyway, the show was going on for two years and... They were, Nat Geo was really liking the show. They're making money on it. They had a, a great audience, good following. And they figured, well, if it's working good now, how can we expand this franchise? And they decided to come down here. Um, Tyler and TJ and, and even .com, they'd fished down here before. And Paul, all those guys had actually been down here. I've known them all for 25, 30 years, pretty much. Um so we're all friends. We're all in the fishery together. We all know what the deal is. And Paul actually approached me and asked me if I wanted to be on the show. He goes, if we do a show on the Outer Banks, would you be willing to do it? I said, sure, no problem. So um, I didn't know what it was going to turn into. I thought they were just blowing smoke, you know. Um, and then sure enough, I talked to one of the producers about setting up an interview for, um, for a casting call, essentially. And I talked to him a little bit, had some of the details on the show, knew that. And um, I was actually fishing up in, I, I went back up to Jersey and fished up there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We had a, we had some really good bluefin fishing in the Hudson. I think we were, we, were, we could catch five a day. And a lot of nights we'd go out there. It was on, I, I told you about that. Yeah. We'd go out there at seven o'clock at night, get out there just at dark. That was all like November, I think. Get there just at dark, and we catch five by three o'clock in the morning. I mean, it was unbelievable fishing. So I got back from that and came back and ran a charter. And there was a note in everyone's box that Nat Geo was looking for boats for Wicked for a new tuna show on the Outer Banks. And the the girls at the booking desk had sent an email out to everybody, so they were actually doing a formal casting call. Um, they interviewed. I don't know how many boats I interviewed, but a lot, you know, a lot, of, a lot of different guys decide, you know, they heard about it and said, yeah, I'd like to try it. You know, for me, I just, I figured why not? I'm doing it anyway. I get paid for it. Um, you can't beat the exposure. You got a charter boat. It's, it's the best exposure you could never afford. So they interviewed us. They liked us. And here we are nine, 10 years later. After, I guess we did nine seasons. Good stuff. I mean, I'll tell you how cool it is. Like, I, I, I can remember. I got Jack on the show. Yeah, Greg got me on the show. I did a season. Um, I mean, he was always, I mean, I think he you would have been a shoe in because you had the, you had the connection up north that you were kind of became the liaison for the guys down here, it seemed like. It, it helped that I knew all the guys on the show, but he, honestly, the cast has no control over anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, sure. I guess, you know, t like TJ, t TJ's, he's been in the fishery for a while and TJ's a talker. So 
he's always giving me the scoop of what's going on with the Wicked Tuna. And I know he's good friends with one of the producers. Right. Like the main producer, they they talk a lot. So he probably had a lot to do with getting us on there. Yeah. You know, with Reed and I, both of us had fished around TJ quite a bit down in Moorhead and up here. And so he knew us and we had that for a shoe in. You know, the fact that we caught a lot of tuna helped too. I would think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, they went. it was an international, you know, you talk about exposure. I mean, one day I was surfing in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I was, I'm surfing in Indonesia <laughs> and I'm in the airport in Bali going on, going to some other island and they've got TV, you know, just like the, the airports here have TVs going with CNN or whatever news channels or Food Network. And on TV, there's Greg and Billen catching the tuna <laughs> yeah. in Indonesia. And then another time, um, I was doing a visa run and I was in, you remember this? I called you. I was in yeah. Kuala Lumpur and I wanted to get some fishing tackle. And, you know, I mean, a lot of um, fishing tackle that we use is made in Malaysia. I think Rapala maybe. Um, anyway, a lot of companies. So I was like, there's got to be a tackle shop. So I've, anyway, I found this cool sh tackle shop in the middle of KL. And I go there and I'm talking to these guys and they're like, wicked tuna, wicked tuna, wicked tuna. And I ended up calling Greg on the phone or FaceTiming and something. And these guys are just like, oh my God, you know, these. So, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, it's amazing how you There's are. A, it's a big People audience. know you know you all over the freaking world, so, man. Um, Jeff Ross was in Mexico and he went to Cuba for a few days and he's sitting at the bar in Cuba talking to the guy next to him. I was like, so where are you from? I don't, I don't know where that guy was from. Somewhere in Europe. <clears throat> Sitting at the bar next to Jeff. Starts talking to him. Finds out what he does, where he's from. Because you're from the Outer Banks. You know the fishing frenzy from Wicked <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun to see where people, you know, the people that watch the show and know us and, you know, and, and try I, and interact with us. It's it's pretty cool. And I would say, I mean, not. I mean, obviously, I've seen what it's done for you know your you know for your exposure. But I mean, I think it's it's helped the charter fleet on the Outer Banks as a whole. You know, there's no doubt because you know you can't always get on the fishing frenzy, but you know that you want to come down and go fishing on the Outer Banks. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, gosh, I'm I'm in my second year, and what did I fish 120, 130 days last year. I yeah. mean, you you're getting we've got new types of people, new clientele. Um, you know, and and every one of them wants to know about Wicked Tuna. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been great. For, it's everybody's just, watched the show. Everybody knows about it. It's been great for all of us. Not yeah, it's not just y'all's business too. It's I mean, it trickles down to my business. And, no, I'm sure because of course I tell everybody I worked for him. I never tell yeah. him I was the worst mate he ever had, but I do, <laughs> well, but I tell him that I worked for him. Yeah, back before the show, I knew him before the show. But um, it's interesting the way the community embraced it because I remember when it first started going talking to you. And prior management at the marina didn't really embrace it. No, really at all. <laughs> no. And it was, we get, I don't want to get into it about what we used to be and what we are now, but um, new administration, a little more aggressive in marketing and aggressive in expansion. And they realized that they had something there that they could capitalize on. Well, that, that's the thing. Oregon Inlet was based on having really good fishermen that could put a pile of meat on the dock. Mm -hmm. That was, I mean, and not to take anything away from it, I mean, they are the best, there's no question. But we're getting into a whole new generation of customers. Yeah. And the experience of that one big fish means a lot more than a pile of dead fish at the end of the day. And there's people that, you know, you need to produce for them, period. You gotta catch a lot of fish for them. But they're not all like that. And, you know, in our, in my business now, it it makes it a lot easier because we see people that are fans of the show, mm -hmm. and they just want to get on the boat. They want to see what's going on, and most of the time, if they've got enough fish for a couple meals, they're happy. And they're this, not trying to fill the freezer. And this is where I know you and I both agree, and the business aspect of it is at the end of the day, and we both it's all about the experience. <clears throat> yep. It's not about yeah. sitting up in the tower or up in the bridge putting meat in the boat and going home without ever engaging with your clients because right. the, the competition in both industries and in offshore and inshore now is so competitive. I mean, there's so many boats. Oh, it's crazy that you have to, you can't you gotta interact with them. You got to, and you they want, to. and they want to interact, man. They're paying for the experience of being with you. They're yeah. paying for the experience of being with me, with you, man. They, they want you to come down, sit down, have a sandwich with them, have a drink, talk to them, let them go up and hold the 
show them what you're looking at. Oh, yeah. They want all that. And <clears throat> yeah. Fortunately, we're at a time now that some of us understand that. And, and, and I mean, and now, like, for the most part, we are, you know, Ooh, that was a bad. How many times a, can you fuck up today? I'm just curious. How many times? For, for the he most got a lot left in him. For the most part, we're if we have a slow day, we're more dissatisfied with it than our customers. Oh, no doubt. You know what I mean? I mean, they a lot of a lot of people have, you know, I've learned quickly to not talk bad, to not apologize for a day because they they're paying a lot of money. And they don't want to hear that they had a shitty day. You know what I mean? They don't want me to, you know, we catch six 75 pound yellow fins. And I mean, you know, we're, you know, we picked away at them. It's all not day, a limit, you know, and, and you know, they, you know, this guy, he just, and I, you put him on the covering board and you put that big tuna in his lap and you get in there with your camera and do the wide angle lens. And that fish is shiny and pretty. And he goes home and puts that thing on Instagram yep. and he's pumped, you know, he's tickled to death. It's not the, you know, I mean, it's not that that is a much more beautiful, much more glamorous picture than, like you said, a pile of dead fish yeah. on the dock, you know, and that's what people <laughs> nowadays are. They like they want to get that photo. Yeah, man. Dude. And a number of us have recognized that. But it's, it's guys like you who have been able to get it out, get that message out there. Yeah. I mean, and, it's it's a lot of the things that we see every day. Most people don't. Yeah. You see a school of dolphins. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see a whale breach. You know, we I don't know how many times I've seen it and. It's like, oh yeah, look at that. There's a whale, and you point it out to someone like, oh my god, look yeah. at that. I've never seen that. And, and we do take it for granted, but no, people, absolutely. People love it, man. If you, especially, I can creep up on the mammals and let them do the little thing, get on my bounce. That's ten knots, huh? That t you can go faster than that. You're under thirty four feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I had a group, a family group, come to catch a bluefin with me last year. It was when it was catch and release, um, and we got out there. And there was a giant bunch of two-tone porpoise on top. And the the mom and her daughter, and I think she had two daughters on the boat and then a son. And, and they were just absolutely, they looked up at me and they said, okay, that was, we're good. We hadn't had a bite yet. Yeah. And they said, well, that was worth the price of a mission right there. You know, and then we saw whales. And then and then we caught we caught a doubleheader of giants and then another thing. I'm like, I mean, wound up, I mean, just, you know, an, you know relatively normal day of fishing for for that time it's, of year it's it's funny because a friend of mine used to say it about hunting he'd say uh the fun stops when the hammer drops and you think about it all the preparation we do to get out there and go fishing and show our people a good day the anticipation of what's about to happen is as much the experience as taking that fish and putting them on deck yeah man and you know marlin fishing you're releasing everything I mean, it's great fishing you're releasing everything and it doesn't take anything away from the customer's experience you know they get the chance to catch this fish and there he is wow look how pretty he is look how cool he is let's turn him loose and for some reason everyone's got to kill every tuna there is but you can show them the same thing you know you catch a really big giant fish you got on there in the boat it's like there you go once you put that fish on deck it's like it was pretty cool looking at them, but now what do we do? <laughs> yeah, it's um, we're fortunate. Not every, not all of us could get the exposure that you did, but all of us can piggyback off of you. So that's that's, yeah. that's good. All right, um, it helps. Man, we could go. I could go on forever talking about this stuff, but we gotta get it moving. All yeah, right, got to get it moving. We well, got a little fishing report. We did a fish report yesterday. Well, I know. Nobody's that, fished since yesterday. This is going to be, what are these going to be back to back? They're going to be a week apart. But yeah. So you're well, not going to yeah, be Yeah, but here. we haven't talked. We, the um, Greg's still bluefinning. Commercial season's still open. Thought For another day be, or two. Another day or two. Um, so I thought that would be something good to talk and about. He'll, you know? he'll go catch one. Got a couple days left. He won't lose his. He won't probably. Uh, hopefully won't, not. Or not or both of them. His. Yeah, not definitely them. not both of them. I was at, at least he, not for the reasons he was, that I lost. Mine. He was, he was, <laughs> hey, he was embarrassed to call you and ask you to be on the show because he said you were mad at him because you lost both. The, he lost both his fish the other day. He said you were mad at him. What did I tell you? What when you when you showed me what happened? What did I tell you? Uh, that I'm a dumbass. No, besides after that, I can't remember. You know, not the, so the, the last thing that matter. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I know, and it's I know just one. I know all that. it is. Every every little thing that you do adds up and compound, especially when you're fishing. Big fish, a lot of drag. I mean, every little thing makes it. We difference. talked about this ad nauseum yesterday, yeah. and I, I tried to make him feel better and tell him stories how I've fucked up over the years and embarrassed myself too. All, I don't, I don't know, if it, but I don't know if it helped him. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and I mean, I, 
I know this better than anybody. I mean, look at the boat I'm about to go fish on. I know yeah. that, I mean, the most attention to detail oriented operation on the possibly on, the, on planet. the planet. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I know, I know better. That's what, that's what killed me about it was I know so much better than doing what I did. And I'm embarrassed. And I'm no, it's one simple, it's like, oh, it hasn't bothered us yet. It'll be okay. No, it will. It'll get you. It'll get you. And it usually gets you at the worst possible, possible time. time, you know? I mean, the biggest fish of the year, the last day I had to fish, the last, you know, check I might get, and then, and that's when it all went down. But it wasn't with the customer. No. The, so, so, so it's not like you lost a, a client. No, I didn't lose a client. So I just lost some self You probably won't gain one. I just from, lost some you won't gain one. Well, you're not going to gain After one from this, talking no. about this, but no, <laughs> you know. didn't lose one the other day. No. Tackle, I, um, tackle failure is not an option. I, exactly. I, I know. Great. But tackle failure is not an option. I, I agree, especially yeah. with, you know, as strong as that stuff is, it's not an option. I pride myself on, I mean, getting the fish in the boat. And I tell people whenever we hook one, I say we're either going to lose them on the hook set or we're going to lose them. I mean, we're not going to lose them. We're going to lose them on the middle of the fight. We're not going to lose them at the end of the bite or not going to lose them when I hook them because I'm going to put it in gear. And um, one day I was talking shit. We had a 70-pounder to decide the boat. It would be a brown one. And I gaffed him. I said, guys, don't worry about it. I got him. Gaffed him, and he wiggled off the gap. <clears throat> How? No. Went over, and he still was still on. Now he's gushing. But he came up again. I got him again. Gaffed him. He wriggled again and took the gaff out of my hand. And then popped. Professional. And broke off. So I lost my custom gaff and lost the fish, and they never came back and fished with me again. Yep. Hey. I'm fucking up now. It happens. <laughs> and so. Um, yeah, it does happen. I try not. I try not to talk shit anymore until I get him in the boat. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and you we know, all I mean, talk shit. It's like, it's like with your mate, you know, I mean, I always, I always think about, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, I've seen my mate do some things that, you know, when a fish is coming up to the gaff that, you know, were worthy of reprimand. And you want to say something, but you can't. Yeah, but you can't. Or sometimes, I mean, sometimes you, you do, <clears throat> but at the same time, I mean, I just, I remember a long line and Gordy always said, you know, when you're, when it's not worth yelling at the at the guy at least when he does everything right and just something went wrong and because nobody feels worse on that boat than, than him than him right at, the, at that moment yeah. you know what i mean trivia question uh, yeah i need a question you got a question okay um what was the largest tuna that we ever caught on the show dressed weight largest bluefin largest bluefin that we ever caught on wicked explain tuna. what dressed, dressed weight is not everybody knows um Dress weight is actually the shipping weight. After we catch the fish, you take out, take off the head, take out the guts, take out the gills, cut the tail off, and that's the weight you get paid on. So largest, the largest we ever caught on the show. On the show, dressed weight, dress weight. All right, whoever gets it, you got to do it. Send it to me. We'll when you're going to win, um, you're going to win a reel this week. Yeah. I've got a couple and, of reels and, to and give you away. Can look back and now, so you can do some research. And you can really, actually research it. Yeah, you got to watch yeah. the show. If you're a go getter, and you can go back and watch the episodes until you find it. It's a lot of episodes you might have to watch, but probably yeah. When were you Good on the in. show? Season three? Are you on YouTube? Or season two? No. What were you doing? I was a mate. Yeah, on well, yeah, probably would have been two okay. or three. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, we caught the hell out of them because oh. I was on the boat. <laughs> You did actually. You had a good year. Yeah, you had a lot of bites. When did you realize they like, lost a lot of fish? Yeah, we had a lot of bites. Once, we, once we, that was once the we, small mistakes that added up on that. Once we put the baits out there, we got them. Yeah, I'm curious. What? You, when did you learn to that was be the, so humble? That was the that was the bluefish year. <laughs> oh, the year yeah. you put the live bluefish out. The dead blue dead bluefish. Dead blue bluefish. Short rigger. Yeah. yeah, that was a trivia question. Nobody, you know, only one guy knew, and he told him already. <laughs> that, told a lot of people, that. but some of them forgot. All right. We're way we're way into this. Okay, let's wrap it up. Um, man, we didn't even get into how crafty he is. We'll have to do another one. Yeah, all the shit I, you know how to do that none of us. Shit you got, of, maybe he could do a shit you got to know. I don't have the, well, yeah, there is a lot of shit you got to know. I mean, how you you're crafty. You know how to build stuff. You know how to work on stuff. You can keep. keep I can't build anything square. I'm trying to build a garage right now, and I can't get it square. <laughs> but I can build anything on a boat because it all it's got to do is finish right. And you could sand it, and you could put putty on it, and you could paint it, and it covers a lot of mistakes. Might take a long time, but you can eventually get it get it molded right. <laughs> we know someone like that. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right, man, Gregory. Thank you, man. This is um seriously been since I started. Cool. This is one of the guys I want to get on here. 
All right. Well, here I am. Fishinado, Fishing Frenzy, DOA. Check us out, Misguided Fishing, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Good job, Jack. Apple You're getting Podcasts. it down. All right. Right. Yeah, we're all over. Red button. Up, oh, hit it. Red. Misguided Fishing has been brought to you by TW's Bait and Tackle, Max Head. Thanks, everybody, for watching, for listening. We'll see you next time.